Hi guys and welcome to another Divi video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well in today's video we're going to be using the fantastic Divi Supreme Modules plugin to create an email opt-in form when you click the button. And you can collect a name and an email and get it to your email list. Really easy to do with the Supreme Modules so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is enable the Visual Builder and we can go down to where we want to work. I've got a section here and I've got a row there and I've got a row here with a single column in it. I'm just going to delete the module that I've got there and we'll start from scratch. Now for this to work today we've got to have Divi Supreme Pro installed and if we go down to their page make sure on the general settings tab you want to make sure that you've got enable Divi pop-up set to on so it's purple like that if you don't have that switch on this will not work today so go in there switch that on save your changes and we'll start building okay so let's just build our email opt-in form first and Divi's got a fantastic opt-in form I'm not going to go into too much detail about it for you I've done a video about how to configure this I'll put the link down below this video if you need to learn more about it so as you can see it's put in a form here by default give it a quick title whatever you want to want to say and what you want to put in your button message is there I'm going to leave mine on subscribe that's fine and obviously you can put in some content here this is like any WordPress text box you can add media if you want to you can create links and align text if you need to there I'm gonna leave mine just as it is now the email account this is the important part this is where you you hook it up to your MailChimp or there's all kind of different email client providers here but I use MailChimp most of the time so I've got mine hooked up already like I say if you want to learn how to do that look at the uh, video about configuring this below the video and I've got mine hooked up let's select a list system 22 news is fine so we're fine there now the fields down below I find that with these things the less you ask people to fill in the more likely there are to do it so I'm going to use a single name field so it's just one name and um, the most important thing obviously is the email address success action I'm going to leave all this as default I'm just going to make the background a little more interesting by adding an image And I'll blend it with the background if you roll down when you put your image in there you see blend modes down here just gonna multiply great and the only thing else I'm going to change is the button the reason that's purple is because I've got my custom button set up that way we can change it by going to the design down to button custom styles let's just change it to blue text is fine blue is fine and a border, border color blue when they hover over the button let's make it go a little bit darker and this is common with all Divi modules if you hover over a dark legend here and you see a little arrow you can click on it it'll give you a non hover state or desktop and a hover state which is when a mouse is on it and you can have two different settings for each I'm just going to pull the color down on that that's fine and I'll leave that just like that okay so I'm gonna call that form done Let's just save our form now I want to save it to my Divi library so we can make it pop up in a moment so I'm gonna to go to this little icon here just to the left of the trash left click on it I'll call it email not going to make it global if I was using this in several different places I might use global because then when you update one it'll update all instances for you but as I'm only using it once I don't need to put the global on 
So let's save that to the library. Great. So now we've saved it to our library, we can trash it. Hit the trash icon. And let's create the button that's going to trigger it. So again, I'm going to hit the left click on the little dark circle there. I'm going to add a button. Again, it's come up with my default button styles. Put in your chosen text there, obviously. Don't need to link this button to anything because we're going to use it as a pop-up. And I'll show you that in a minute. Let's go to our design. Let's move this over a little bit. I want the button to be in the middle of the column. Text, I'm going to leave the same. Button, again, it's got my default styles. You can just go in and put your own styles in with the custom styles button right here. I guess we'll make it blue as well. We made the other one blue. And let's do the same for the hover. Little arrow right there, hover state. Click on the color, change the color that you want it to be. Go back to desktop, all should be the same. Great. And we'll just make the border blue. Fantastic. Let's make our button a bit wider and just push that gallery down a bit. So we can do that by rolling down. We're still on the design tab. One more thing while we're in the button. When I roll over it, you'll see a little icon there. If you don't want to have that there, you can just turn that to off. If you do want it, you can go down and select whatever icon you want. Let's put a an envelope or envelope in there. That's fine. If you want it to be all the time, you can go down a bit further and flip that to off and that icon will be there all the time. So we're good with that. Let's go down to spacing. I'm going to make the button a bit wider. I'm going to put 100 pixels. Just put in 100. It'll put in the pixels for you. Hit the chain. It'll do the other side. As you can see, that's made it wider. And I want to push that gallery down a little bit. So let's put a margin on the bottom of, say, 100 also. Fantastic. OK, so how's this button going to know to pop up our email subscribe form or our opt-in form? Well, presuming we're done with all the design of the button there, let's go over to our advanced tab and we'll go down to visibility. And if we go down, you're going to see this little switch that says use pop up. Now, had we not enabled this in our Divi Supreme Pro, you would not see this switch here. So that's why it's really important to have that option set to on. So let's just say use pop up, yes. What do we want to pop up? Well, we want a layout that we've created, so that's fine. You can choose an iframe, an image, or a video also, but layout's fine. Where is it? It's in our Divi library. So let's select it from our library. Now, we're not going to see it here right now. And the reason is because we've saved it and we haven't refreshed the page. So this is looking at the, the old library. So let's just save this. Save the page changes and refresh the page. Once loaded, we can go back into our module, little cog, go back to advanced, to visibility. That's already clicked from where we left it. Now let's see if we can find our layout in the library. We should see it now that we've refreshed the page. And it was called email. There it is on the bottom. Great. Now, we want to trigger it on the module click. Well, this is our module, it's a button. So you can either use module click or you've got the option to do it on button click. And both of those would work in this case as our module is a button. So let's leave it on module click. We'll leave close pop up trigger. If they click outside the pop up, it'll close. Don't want to use auto close. If you put that to on, you can set a time limit of 10 seconds. It'll close after 10 seconds or whatever time you put in there. You can decide how you want it to show up. Let's say swing in and you can decide how you want it to disappear. Fade out right big. There's plenty to choose from there. When it pops up, I want it to be in the center. Yeah. I want it to be absolute. In other words, if they scroll the site up and down, it's going to stay exactly where it is. Don't want to use full width. 
it's, it's going to come up of their default 680 and that's plenty I find for me if you want to use full width by all means do and put that on and you can change the default width that you use right there but 680 seems to work for most things for me show overlay yep that means when it pops up the background will darken out you can choose the background color there but I find that default works great show a close button yep we can show a little X that will close it also and that will be on the inside unless you choose to put it elsewhere and you can also choose the icon font size if you want to make it bigger or smaller the default is the X here which is the usual for a shutdown option and again you can choose your colors down below here don't need any transitions positions or scroll effects so I think we're good what we'll do is we'll hit the save button we'll save our page changes exit the visual builder and let's see what we've got now when I click on the button our email opt-in form should pop up and there it is and as you can see it's got the light box effect with the overlay in the background which darkens out the background if I scroll the background up and down it'll stay where it is if I just click anywhere off of it it'll disappear and that's a great little feature to have on your site there so I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful if you have please ring the bell give it a thumbs up comment share and subscribe to our YouTube channel once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.